Hello, my name is George Powells, and I'm going to do a demonstration of Activity 6-2 uh, for the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus class for New Horizons. The name of the lab is Collecting and Network-Based Security Intelligence. We're going to have 11 steps to follow in this uh, particular demo. We're going to start out by logging into Server 1 and installing Snort. We're going to copy the configuration file for Snort into the EDC directory. We're going to examine the filter file that we use in order to be able to eliminate some of the redundant information that uh, shows up as a result of Snort. We're then going to copy that filter file over to the correct location uh, in the filters directory. We're going to run Snort uh, with the filter and the configuration file. We're then going to log into the Kali Linux system and we're going to launch an attack on the server. We'll examine the output from Snort using Wire, Wireshark over on uh, server one. Remove the filters from the filter file, relaunch Snort without the filters. We'll run the attack, rerun the attack, and then we're going to check the difference between uh, the information that we caught with the first. Uh, uh, filter file installed and then without the filter file installed and so that'll be the plan so to begin I'm going to move over here to server 1 and I'm going to log into server 1 by doing our control alt delete I'll go over here and I'll go ahead and paste the password into the system for me because I'm just too lazy to type it in and we'll wait for that to log in now it's going to take just a minute for the server to come up first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the message about the networks and I'm going to say, no, I don't want to go ahead and, and connect to the networks. And I'm going to go ahead and close Server Manager because that just seems to get in my way. From here, I'm going to open up my, my uh, uh, folders uh, app. I want to then go ahead and check the local C drive and go into my data directory uh, for the system. And then I want to go ahead and open up my collecting cybersecurity intelligence uh, folder for the class. You'll notice that this Snort installation files are located here in the Snort in, uh, 2.9.8.0 installer.exe. I'll go ahead and run that. And it'll ask me if I want to agree to the license agreement. Of course I do. Uh, it asks me what directories I want to create, uh, components that I want to install. I'll go ahead and select next. And then it'll ask me where I want to install the directory. I'm going to put that in the root of C. And I'll go ahead and launch that. And you'll notice that it's done. It's ready to go. I can go ahead and close this out. Uh, and you'll notice that I get a message that it has been successfully installed. And then the other components that they want to go ahead and add as a result of the Snort installation is the Win PCAP, which will give me the ability to allow for my network interface to go into promiscuous mode so it can collect, capture all data traffic. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. I'm going to do that. From here, I want to take a look at my Snort configuration file. I'm going to go ahead and open this up by double-clicking on it, and then it's going to want to know what application I want to use to, to view that. They don't have a v default application selected for this .conf file. So I'm going to go ahead and select the WordPad to be able to take a look at that. And what I really want to don't have a lot of time to actually explain all of the contents of the uh, uh the Snort configuration file. But I do want to point out that one of the things that is very important and one of the things that they mentioned when it came to the installation of the Win PCAP file is to be, is that it is very important that you identify what your variable is for the home network. Okay, and you'll notice that it's set by default already because of the lab uh, to the home underscore net. It's going to be 10.39.5.0 with a 24-bit subnet mask, just so that Snort knows what the local network is. And then, of course, there are a variety of other variable settings. We'll go ahead and get a copy of that Snort file, that Snort configuration file. I'll do a copy of that. And then I'll go back to the root of C. I'll go into my Snort directory. I'll go into my EDC directory, and I'll go ahead and paste it in here. Now, there's already a Snort configuration file here, and it's going to ask me, hey, do you want to overwrite that? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the file in the directory, and off it goes. And so that configuration file is now ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the uh, root of C. I'm going to go back into my data directory. 
I'm going to go back into my collecting cybersecurity intelligence directory. And I want to go ahead and get the rules file. And I want to go ahead and make sure you get a chance to see what the rules file looks like on the inside. So I'll bring that up in WordPad as well. And what we want to let you know about is that we've got a really uh, four different ways that we're going to filter the data, three of which we're going to actually going to apply. The, the, the fourth one we do not. Uh, we're going to look for a SYN scan, synchronization scan. And what we want to do is we want to get, identify when we receive a synchronization message. Okay. And then we then the server replies with a SYNAC. And then we get a reset packet instead of a final acknowledgement. Okay. And you'll notice that we're looking for a count of 10. Okay. So we're going to summarize 10 of those entries at a time with a message uh, that says, yeah, we have a SYN scan. Okay. You'll notice we're going to do an AX scan. An AX scan checks to see whether or not we have a, uh, a, a connection-oriented firewall installed between our systems. And again, we're looking at our AX scans that we're going to summarize uh, a count of 10 so that we don't see all 10 of those AX scans, but we do get a summary message that says that we have had 10. And then same thing with the Christmas scan. The Christmas scan uh, uh, uses the push, the urge, and the fin uh, bits turned on in our flags all at the same time. This is not normal traffic. We want an indication when that happens. And, and you'll notice that we're going we're gonna to go ahead and get each and every one of the packets that is, uh, meets, is, meets the criteria for our, um, for our Christmas scan. Okay. And you'll notice that we've actually engaged those here. I've got uh, an event filter for nine, uh, I think it's like nine million in one. Yeah, that's this one right up here. Okay. We've got an event filter for nine zero 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 two, which would be this one here. And then, of course, we've got the one for, is this nine million? What is that? One, two, three, one, two. Yeah, nine million three. Uh, and that'll be that for the Christmas scan right here. Okay, there's that. And then they also identify uh, 9004. I do not see a 9004 there. So, oh, wait, here it is. I'm sorry. That's right there. That's rule number 12, which is a UDP coming from any going to any. That's for, for, for a Facebook, basically, or YouTube type of activity. Okay, so we're going to look for that as well. Okay, so that's the contents of the filter filter file so that we can, again, filter our output. So why don't we get to go ahead and get that rules, those rules there for my folder file to a copy. Okay, and I'll go ahead and go back to my root of C. I'll go ahead and bring up Snort. I'll go into my rules directory and I'll go ahead and pop that one right in there and that'll that'll apply there. And now we're ready to go. Next thing I need to do is bring up command prompt. So I'm gonna go ahead and well, I'll go ahead and leave that files open there. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and oh, well, I need to right click, my bad. And I want to select Command prompt admin. I want the admin to go ahead and run the command prompt. And while that's open, let me go ahead and go here. I'll go ahead and change the properties so that I so that you can actually see this a little bit better. I'll turn it into the send a console and I'll make it about 18 and we'll click OK. And you'll note that, yeah, you can now see it a little bit better. The next thing that we're going to do besides make this full screen is go ahead and run snort. And the command that we're going to use to run snort will give us the ability to go ahead and call in uh, to play that configuration file and then identify where the log data is gonna, gonna show up, where that's gonna be deposited, the, the log data. Um, and the command to do that is snort and it's gonna do a, a, a dash uh, C to be able to define what our configuration file, and of course that's gonna be the standard uh, uh, um, snort file, that's gonna be C colon backslash etc. Oh, 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 I did that wrong. Snort backslash edc backslash and then it's snort dot conf file. Okay. We want to identify that we are going to be listening on interface one. So that's going to be uh, an I1 with a dash. Okay. We're then going to go ahead and identify where the log file is going by doing a dash L. And then the log file will go into the C colon backslash snort backslash log directory okay, for that information to go ahead and drop off in there. And then one other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make sure that I get output to the console. So I do a dash capital A and I do a C-O-N-S-O-L-E so I can actually get information not only to the log directory but also the console. And I'll go ahead and hit enter and you'll, whoop, 
it didn't like snort wait what did i do oh and you know what i did this last time i did this demo i do it this time with the demo i have to go into the snort directory to launch that command so let me go ahead and do a cd c colon backslash snort backslash edc directory that's where i'm going to go ahead and launch that oh i'm sorry should be the bin directory bin and i'll hit enter there next thing i want to do is go ahead and run that snort command let's try that now here we go boom okay and you notice that it's off to the races Okay. Now, next thing I'm going to do is go into Kali Linux and launch my attack. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and launch the attack from Kali by logging in. I'm going to go ahead and use the username of root. Okay. Uh, password is going to be PA22W0RD, uh, and it'll get me in. And that should bring up Kali Linux for us. It'll be a minute while that one engages. And now we're going to go ahead and click on the terminal window. Boom. Okay. Terminal window is up now, and I'm going to go ahead and run my nmap scan dash capital A against my server 10 dot, oop, and I always do that wrong, 10.39.5.50. Uh, with a, yeah, and I think that's ready to go. Yeah, it's good. And what this will do is it'll run my sin scan, it'll run my Christmas scan, it'll run an axe scan. Basically, what I do want to do is get an idea what operating system is running here. I want to get an idea, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter because this will take a while. I'm going to get an idea of what operating system is running here uh, with this command. I'm going to get an idea of what applications, not only specific, not what applications generally, but specifically what applications are going to be running on this system by version number, as well as a trace route and uh, a ping scan. And yeah, we're going to do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, but this is would be the standard methodology that you would use to be able to go ahead and launch this attack. Now, quite honestly, when you do this in the lab, this scan is going to take a lot longer than you expect. You're going to think your screen is frozen up, but it's not. It's not. It's just taking a long time to go through everything that it wants to do. And, and quite honestly, it will, um, it should return the information you're looking for, return very quickly. Now, one of the things you can do in order to uh, uh, alleviate the boredom of watching nothing happening <laughs> on your screen is you can actually put this into a verbose mode. To be able to identify exactly what's going on when it happens with nmap but by default we don't get a, a lot of output with uh, the commands until the commands have completed you'll notice that this did finally complete and you'll note that uh, as a result of that scan uh, I got an idea of that. Yeah, you know, sort of using a remote procedure call, specifically a Microsoft Windows remote procedure call. You notice that we're running uh, port 593, Microsoft RPC over HTTP uh, stuff. And we got a variety of other things that are going on. NetBIOS is out here on the system as well. Now, I need to go back over to the server. And you notice that once we get in the server, you notice that I got a lot of output. I got a SIN scan. Yep, one, two, three, four, five messages for the SIN scan. I've got one, two, three, four, five messages for the AX scan. Okay, going on. Uh, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five Christmas scans happening on the system. So I did get some messages from that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and control C out of... Uh, the command okay and uh, I'm going to pause the video for just a moment alrighty so we're back and uh, yeah so we, we did finish this since can now next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and minimize this I'm gonna bring up Wireshark okay and in Wireshark I'm gonna open up the pcap file the pcap file here in just a minute you'll notice that it wants me to upgrade Wireshark I'm gonna say skip this version okay I'll go ahead and then go into file and do open and from here this pc i'll scroll down to the bottom i'll open up the c drive i'll go to snort okay and i'll open up the log directory you'll notice that there is a log here i uh, will open this up and what I'm going to do is make this a little bit bigger so you can see all the packets. And really, the stuff that you saw at the command line is what we what we see in Wireshark. We, you get more information here. I can open up the uh, the packets by clicking on the packet, 
and I'm going to go to the TCP protocol uh, header. And you'll notice in the TCP header, this is a SIN, SIN packet. It is the SIN flag turned on. And so, yeah, it's all ready to go. Okay, it does show as, as a SIN. If I go down here to this one, you'll notice that the ACK flag, where is it? Yep, there it is, the ACK flag is turned on, and it tells me that there. And then down here for the Christmas scan, you'll notice that fin, sin, push, urge, those are all turned on. Again, that doesn't happen normally in the wild. Cool stuff. Now let's go ahead and leave, let's go ahead and close this one out. We'll close it out. We'll go back into the local rules, but I want to make sure it's in the rules directory. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and put a comment in front of the events. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this the easy way. I'm going to go to replace. I want to make sure that I get the EVENT entry in my file. And I'm replacing that with a pound sign event, which will comment this field out. I'll go ahead and select replace all. And you'll notice that they're all now replaced, uh, commented out. Basically what I've done is I've removed those from the filters. So I've removed the filters from the rules files. So I should be getting pretty much everything that comes to the system. So I will close this file out after I save it. I'll go back to the command prompt on the server. I will rerun snort from the command line. Okay. I'll go back to the Kali Linux machine. And I will rerun my attack on Kali Linux against server 1. Take just a minute for this to complete. I'll pause the video while it takes some time doing that. All right. The uh, attack has run successfully. We can go back now to server 1. And you'll note that I have a lot more information now than I had in the previous scan. A lot more information than in the previous scan because we turned off the filter. Now let me go in and stop the stop the snort process by doing a control C. Uh, yep, there we go. And now we'll go back into Wireshark. And we'll open the file, file, open. You'll notice that I now have two log files, one from the previous and one from this one. We'll get the later one. Okay. And you'll note that indeed I have a lot more information to have to parse through to figure out exactly what's going on in our systems. So this, this filter, this method, this thing in my rules file gives me the ability to cut back on the amount of information that I'm logging, which makes it a lot more efficient for me to find out exactly what's going on in my, my network much quicker. Okay. Cool. So taking us back to client one, go ahead and take a look and make sure we did everything we wanted to do. This was again, activity 6-2 collecting network-based security intelligence. We installed Snort. We copied the configuration file to the EDC directory. We examined the filter file. We copied the filter file. We ran Snort. We launched an attack on the server. We examined the output of Snort using Wireshark. We removed the filters from the filter file. We relaunched Snort. We reran the attack. And then we checked the difference between that with the filter and that without the filter. Cool, cool. This has been your demonstration of Activity 6-2 for the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus class. Uh, any questions, you can contact me at Powell's G, P A U W E L S G, at gmail.com anytime, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thanks again. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on another video.